Hey everyone, it's Fim over here. If you want to keep updated with the latest from Maroon Talk, make sure to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You may also follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Pocket Cast, Breaker, Overcast, and Radio Public. UP5! Welcome to Maroon Talk, the only segment dedicated for anything and everything UP Fighting Maroons. I'm Phil Moran, Batch 2010 from UP Los Baños. I'm Levi Prora, Batch 2010, UP Los Baños. I'm Piel Ordanes, Batch 2011 from UP Diliman. I'm Christina De Los Reyes, Batch 2011, UP Diliman. I'm Marina Bea Hoff, Batch 2013, UP Diliman. I'm Callie Nevea Huff, Batch 2013, UP Diliman. Yes, that is so perfect. That was like one take. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. That was one <laughs> <We'll> take. <laughs> yeah, fat. Right. I'd like to welcome Did to the show. Did you feel dab? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to welcome to the show our Season 78 Women's Football Champions. Uh, please welcome Christina De Los Reyes, Marie Nevea Huff, and Callie Nevea Huff to the show, everyone. Thanks for joining us, guys. It's such a pleasure to have you guys here on Maroon Talk. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Thanks for having us. We've been having so much stories <laughs> and, uh, right before the, our show started. But then I had to like, cut Kylie off because she was like so game already. But then we <laughs> for later. So let's, just, let's get the ball rolling now. I think we're going to have a kind of long uh, episode for, for this one since you guys are three. We haven't really had uh, this much guests, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, in, in our previous episodes, though. But then, let's make it work. Okay. Uh, I want to get started here with uh, just all about your Season 78 Championship game. Actually, ah, the Championship game. We can talk about the season after this one. Um, mm. Coming into the game, you guys were second, if I'm not mistaken, to LaSalle. A powerhouse LaSalle team uh, who was undefeated uh, during the whole season, right? That was a team composed of Kyla Inkig, Ina Palacios, a rookie Sara Castaneda, uh, who else? I'm missing someone. Shannon um, Arthur. Shannon Arthur and... Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, in short, that was a powerhouse team. It, uh, <clears throat> their undefeated record speak, very, spoke for itself. No? Very stacked. Who do, who do I want to ask first? Uh, <laughs> that's Christina. <laughs> she scored the first goal in that game. Uh, yep. What about... Uh, what was the atmosphere, like the attitude of the, the, the morale of the team heading to that game? Uh, since, you know, you guys know that LaSalle was unbeaten that time. What did Coach Anto tell you before the game? And how, how, were you guys really like hyped up for it or was, it, was the pressure there? Talk to us about that. What was happening with you guys that game? Uh, first of all, I mean, this was like three years ago almost, or, or actually no, like four or five years ago. So it's really reminiscing. <laughs> um, but but I remember the atmosphere was pretty good. We uh, we were excited, especially because um, the, the year before we got to the finals as well and we lost it against FEU. So, so we were more determined um, to actually get there this year. We knew that was going to be a difficult... Um, a mountain to climb, especially with LaSalle being there and being on top of their game. But then uh, I think it came down to spirit and like who wanted it more, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fun fact, uh, Christina actually came from Zabel as well. So I can see yeah, her yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> back when we were in Zabel, I can see her in, uh, playing in the field uh, under coach hands. No? And <laughs> yeah. as far as I know, <laughs> So my my ex girlfriend also played football for for. I like how you're talking about your ex girlfriend here. Who who is she? I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you know, <laughs> wow. So that's why when I saw Christina coming to you, I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, I want to go to, to Marina, man. Uh, on your part, okay. um, if I'm not mistaken, you were already one of the veterans during that time, if I'm not mistaken, were you? 
Um, no, not really. No. Well, that was actually my second year playing. Yeah. That was that was my second year playing because my first year in 2013 was my residency year because mm-hmm. I actually transferred colleges from the states. Mm-hmm. So with that, that year was actually my second playing year. So it's okay. like the second time being in the finals. Yeah. Um. But then, how were you with the team already? We're like, I, I'm supposing you, you you were one okay. of the leaders as well at that time. Nah. Even if it was your well. Second. At that time, we pretty much knew each other ever since. We've actually known each other, like most of us, a big group of us, since 2008. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of been like a long time coming where we're pretty much the same group um, coming into UP and then just being around each other. So up to that point, I wouldn't really say I was a senior just because it was like my second year playing. But maybe um, a player with more experience of, with the game. Yeah. So it, I think it definitely helped contribute that time. Okay. Now let's yeah. turn over to Kali. I know this is going to hurt you since you were like injured during that time. No? Um, but then how were you as a spectator during that time for, for, for your teammates? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you did your own. I will say that. I resent the the <laughs> I resent the assumption that I'm gonna be hurt like yo it was four years really? ago. I think I got a hurt. I'm I think it was four years ago. Yeah, I, I can't even remember. It was a while back. Like actually yeah. I still think to this day that getting injured was the greatest blessing wow. of my okay. life. Um I mean that's a whole other story, but uh that whole season, yeah, at the time was absolutely heartbreaking because during that point in my life, soccer was my whole life like i was twice a day every single day sometimes three times a day 30 minutes before training an hour after training wow just kicking and kicking and kicking and just doing everything i could and to have that i guess taken away from me somehow was very painful yeah Yeah. and especially when i felt like that i remember that season i cannot remember the specifics but i remember it being very rocky like we weren't sure if we were going to get to the finals Mm-hmm. Um, there were a lot of moments where, you know, I had to talk to the girls that were younger than me that were in my position that I was like, you know, you could be doing this instead. Um, so I think other than focusing on my recovery, I was also just trying to make sure everyone was doing the best that they could. I'm, I'm not really one to like lift up everybody's spirits, like go team, have more heart. <laughs> I'm more of like, no, this is specifically what you need to work on. Oh, okay. And I was very... Um, I guess I'm a bit of a micromanager, so that is how I, I like to think that I can do it. I'm, I'm not much of a kumbaya in terms of, like, I'm very competitive, so I'm like, no, honey, you need to work on this. Yeah, I mean, that's why I mentioned, uh, I'm pretty sure you, you weren't, like, lacking of support for your teammates during that time. Yeah, you were- oh, no, 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 I was always there, you know, it's like, just because you're injured doesn't mean you don't show yeah. up, it doesn't yeah. mean that you don't. Like I was putting in so much work and obviously the results weren't showing what I was used to it showing. So yeah. So but, those um, know, you got injured what game in the season? This was early in the, the season. Very, very the first game. game. I got yeah, an ACL yeah. and it wow. was and so yeah. I remember my doctor telling me it was an ACL and she's like, You have about um like a seventy percent tear. And I'm like, so 30%, I could still play, right? <laughs> so, I, I actually was still playing for like maybe a month and a mm-hmm. half. And then a few days before I was supposed to play again, I think it was the second round game against the LSU. I tore it, a, like full tear, nasty tear in the middle of training. And um, yeah, I did. But, yeah. but it was... It was uh, a difficult challenge because on that first game you scored a hat trick Kelly so it, Ooh, you were at the peak of your, your game and then you get an ACL like that so in my mind at least um, coming from being in a leadership role I was freaking nervous about what would come throughout the season if we didn't have Kelly Huff you know what I mean but I mean she 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 stuck. She stuck by her side. She supported all the people that um, replaced her in terms of the, her position and everything, and she was still there. Great, great. 
So, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, this happened late in the game. If you scored yeah. a hat trick already, wow. Second half. Yeah. I think we were, it was against USD and it was, I think, 5-0 like five. already by the wow. time. Yeah. By wow. the time yeah, she, she fell, yeah. And at that time, your games were held mostly where? FEU? Uh, that one, oh. I think, was an Emperor Door. Okay. Yeah, yeah, McKinley. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, right. you guys have questions for them? Yeah, yeah, I'll go back to yeah, you. Uh, yeah, I'll go back to yeah. Christina since yun nga, uh, Kali got injured the first game. So, talk about that leadership role that, of course, when someone gets injured, the mm-hmm. team is always, okay, next man up, next woman up. So, how did you guys mm-hmm. just sort of take the leadership role, not, not necessarily away from Kali, but of course, Kali still mentoring from the sidelines, yeah. but uh, talk about that, just having to share the mentorship role. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it was a a mix between, uh, of course, our coach who who knew our players um, as much as anyone else on the team playing on the field with them. Uh, he knew uh, who could, you know, um, um, step up to that role. Um, of course, we had a couple of options, a lot of them younger people. But when it comes to... Uh, me in particular, I, I, I can't say for certain how I was as a leader. <laughs> uh, me, um, as a captain, I'm not sure. I think, I don't know what Callie or Marie will say to you about that. But like, um, at the very least, it, I focus more on what happens on the field. So like in training, um, whoever shines, whoever uh, steps up to the plate, right? But when it comes to off the field emotions, talking to people and getting them ready for an, another match wherein they've never played on the starting 11 and they come off from the bench. Um, that kind of leadership I might have not had at the time. And so, of course, Callie and Marie and everyone else had to step up to um, make sure that, you know, they were also emotionally stable and emotionally ready for it. But yeah, yeah, that's, I think that's how it went. Is that how it went with BG? I'm not sure. <laughs> well, I think out, of, out of the three of us out of the three of us Marie is definitely the more maternal like she's the one that really yeah, goes yeah, to yeah. younger players really yeah. works on them and makes sure that yeah. they're confident yeah. for the game Christina yeah. is more of lead by example like yeah. this is what you should be doing right. to get mm-hmm. to where you want to go and I'm more of like honey this is what you need to fix and I can help you fix it. You have like a but whole I'm not gonna, list of things. Yeah, but I'm not gonna, I, I have played A through D. I'm not going to be the one to like walk you through it. You're going to have to meet me after training and ask for my help. I'm not going to go out of my way. Ooh, like, if you yeah. want to. But yeah, yeah um, Marie, out of the three of us, definitely the more maternal. Like building everyone up, making sure everyone's in the right headspace, building confidence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Christina and I. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, we we got there. I guess I guess we got there. Oh, eventually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have this hanging question, though, because I watched your uh, good thing your championship game was still up on YouTube. So I was watching mm-hmm. it, and when I saw you guys were walking on the field, he- heading to the, mm-hmm. the kickoff, I noticed you guys were holding hands together. Yeah. Was it a thing like that, that you guys did the whole season, or was that just for that particular game? So honestly, he I, also I got did that last season. I, guess, I, got I think we did that last season. I think we did it season. for a lot of the Panay football matches as well. Okay. So it was, it was a thing that uh, you guys were consi- consistently doing as a team? Like, yeah, I yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I think especially with the bigger games. Um, yeah. It was just a show of solidarity, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and, and it helps psych you up, I guess. So, yeah. I mean, everyone has their own. I mean, Preparation. I, I, I don't even know you guys, but then when I saw that, <laughs> guys were, were, did that thing, it, got, it literally gave me goosebumps. It was like simply yeah. walking onto the field, having uh, for a big game. Yeah, it just shows that you got each other's backs. You know, it, it's it's, some, it's super simple, but it's super effective. So that's, that's just one thing. Like what, you know what Marie said earlier is that most of us girls have been playing together since two thousand eight. You yeah. know, you have me, Marie, Christina, Molly. Um, Mary Rose, we had all been playing together. Uh, uh, a couple of the other girls as well were in and out of the national team. You know, uh, CP was also playing with us for a long time. Tally Nise, Ina Abadilia, like that whole group, we had known each other for years. Yeah. And for some of the girls, this was really their last opportunity 
to show, um, to really wear maroon and to uh, play together. So that moment in itself, I think, held a lot for a lot of the girls. And, uh, you know, coming back from the, I think, season 77 championship yeah. where we lost, that was like, okay, this one, it's not going to happen again. So that yeah. holding hands thing, it is something that we do often. But I think in that moment, it was also, you know, getting each strength from each other and making sure yeah. that um, the confidence would remain there and that we would just play the game. And it definitely showed on the field. I mean, like, I'm sure the, the fans would have, would have seen that as well. Okay, mm-hmm. since you've been mentioning Kanina, na, kanina pa na, that, that your teammates you've been playing, that, I guess that core, You've been playing for such a long time already. I guess. Talk to us how you guys got into UP. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, you guys came from, from, from private schools, just like I did. So what, what, what was that thing that made you decide to join the UP fighters? Or just go to Diliman and study for UP? Uh, who wants to go first? Marie? Oh, there, Marie. There you go. There you go. Sure. Okay. Well, when I started off high school in Poveda, I was actually told specifically to not go to UP. Like, I would not survive. Like, it was a, you will not understand what's going on. You don't know Filipino that well. It wouldn't be a good idea. That's that's really what I was advised. But what ended up happening as people started graduating and going to UP, I started noticing, hey, a lot of my old teammates are actually in UP. And I know for a fact, UP is a really amazing school and I would love to go. So why not give my all to try and go? But before um, I ended up graduating in the States and then it was a whole, okay, everybody's really in UP. And it was a decision to make if I would transfer or not, or just continue studying in the States. At that time, I wasn't playing soccer and I really wanted to play well football again. So I made the decision and just said, you know what, I'm going to move to UP, be with my teammates, get to um, get to have an amazing education and get to play again. So it was it was it was more of that at first. And then everything else that happened in UP just unfolded the way it did. So luckily, I ended up understanding and speaking fluent Filipino. It was not a problem. So, yeah, I mean, I'm here now in Cebu. So if anybody would tell me, hey, you can't speak Cebuano, I mean, I really can't, but I can understand. And it's just a challenge that, like, if presented, I would rather, I would take it. Marie is currently taking up med in Cebu. Uh, how long have you been there? Um, I'm currently a second year med student. Okay. But yeah, so one year. Were you guys recruited to play for the team or how did that happen? Um, at least for you, Marie. For, for you, Muna. So since we were kind of part of the youth national team, mm-hmm. the old coach, the former coach, um, was Coach Klang. Mm-hmm. And I knew I knew him and I kind of like spoke to him before and he spoke to me before about maybe possibly going to UP. So during my Christmas break of when I was still in the States, I visited the Philippines. And that's kind of like when the plan solidified of me finally transferring and sending in my paperwork to become part of Batch 2013. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so he kind of approached me. Kali went to UP first, right? We went in the same time. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Actually, yeah. It's okay. So it's it's the same story, guys, at least with you two. Kaline Marie. Um, I mean, I went to UP because She's it's different. it's the best school, man. Like, okay. <laughs> I, just, I don't know what else to tell you. I um I was training with UP when I was a senior in high school, and uh, I was kind of looking at where I wanted to go. And to be honest, I really wanted La Salle. My friends were going to La Salle. It looked like it was gonna be so much fun. And Ateneo, <laughs> you know, my best friends were going to Ateneo. And UP were girls that I had known my entire life. But I was like, no, I want something different. <laughs> and um, I ended up going to UP because my parents were like, you know, uh, no matter what you do, uh, everyone's going to look at a degree from UP with respect and know that you uh, went there uh not just because of your skill, but because you were able to get through the rigorous academic standard. Um, yeah. You were able to hold your own. And, you know, you adapted very well to all these, not just all the different uh, languages and culture and everything, but just to the 
academic system that UP has. And so for me, I was like, okay, well, that is obviously going to be a challenge for me, a predominant English speaker. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's, uh, I did learn Filipino. I understand it now. I'm very, very happy I went to UP, not just because of that, but because of all the people I met. Um, and I, I do believe it is the best school. So, yeah, that's why I went there. I mean, it's number one in the country. I think it's good enough for me. Yes, great, great. Well, so the reason, the only reason why I'm asking is, yeah, since uh, most people from private schools don't really consider he heading to UP, mm, uh, yeah. unless they have, like, uh, relatives who went there and uh, mm -hmm. yeah yun. so I'll turn yeah. it over to Christina now <laughs> since we both came mm -hmm. from Zabelga I'm sure Coach Hans got his hand uh, on recruiting you as well for LaSalle mm -hmm. so talk to us about uh, what happened I mean like I'm pretty sure he wanted you to play for him in Taft <laughs> yeah so, well actually um, after this call I want to ask you how you decided to go to Los Banos actually because <laughs> it's an interesting story it's always an interesting story when people decide to go into different colleges right um, I think the first time I actually uh, considered it was when we were uh, playing in Zabel in high school in Alaska Cup yeah. and uh, you, you know there's a whole festival and there are lots of different age brackets and and um, my senior from Zabel, Kyra Dimatula, who was the captain in UP at the time, oh, yeah. um, asked me, yeah. So she asked me if I wanted to like check it out and everything. And so, yeah, um, I guess I ended up um, going to UP tryouts and everything and checking it out. And I don't think I actually joined the tryouts. I was just there. I was still injured at the time, but then... Um, I think what really just pushed me towards that was um, I, I already had a course in in uh, UP. I, I had uh, I was think I was taking I was picking between economics and engineering, right? Um, and I picked engineering, and and they they wow. got me for it. So it was between that and LaSalle, and LaSalle was accounting, and I was like, you know what, engineering <laughs> sounds a lot funner. <laughs> I might as well go to UP. So, so that's, I mean, the course was always there, right? Like you're always going to think about your course as well. I mean, of course, uh, as an athlete, you want to make sure that you um, are playing with the best of the best and, and people that you know, which was also a plus because I knew Maria, I knew Callie were going to go. I knew yeah. all the others were going to eventually go as well. Well, I didn't know Maria and Callie were going to go, but they eventually did anyway. But yeah. <laughs> did you guys go like after me, right? Yeah. 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 Ah, so yeah. Most, yeah, oh, I remember Kyra was part of the UP team there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, oh. so she she opened up that idea to me, which is nice. Like, yeah. yeah. Kyra is older than us, actually. Uh, she's uh, batch 09. Uh, I think she's yeah, top. yeah. I think she's two years. Two yeah. years. Top, yeah. Uh, I think. Clothing. Interior, interior designers. Clothing tech. Fashion, yeah, clothing tech. Clothing yeah. tech. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. She and she has her own business now, and it's it's huge. So it's really good. Which makes me want to guess her now. Oh wait, thank you for reminding me. Yeah, <laughs> you should. You should. You should. Yeah. Helping out with the whole. I I mean, I know that I saw some posts about her business, like helping out with the whole COVID thing, which is yeah. really good. I saw that as well. Yeah. Shout out to Kaya Dimatulak. Hopefully, yeah. you listen to this one. Shout if you listen to this one, you're coming next. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Don't keep it tight. <laughs> <laughs> So you're going to head into your student life na as, as UP peeps. Mm. Piel, go ahead. Um, well, actually, the question ko, uh, was about the uh, uh, season 78 itself. I, I mean, um, about what happened before uh, in Kairoji. I mean, how big was uh, that season for um, both the men's and the uh, women's football team? You guys want to take this? Yeah. I mean, um, Kel -kel. that was that was absolutely devastating, I think, uh, for a lot of us. Um, everyone had a relationship with Raji on some level. Uh, he was just the absolute best kid um, and put so much of his heart into the game that it wasn't just like, OK, let's let's play in his memory. It's like, no, let's play uh, for his love of the game and, and play like he would have played and um that really in i don't want to say it inspired us but man it really did drive us to to do more because it's like 
<laughs> one of those moments where you realize how fleeting life is and how much just the sport can really do for someone's life. Like a kid like Raji, a lot of our other girls on the team that went to college just because of soccer and makes you just appreciate those moments more, appreciate your teammates more and just really come together and lean on each other for support. So, um, you know, we, we would always say hashtag for Raji. We would yell his name, uh, had it on the back of his jerseys. And, you know, I don't think it really ever encompassed how any of us truly felt like I, you know, Raji was a great guy, but really I remember him as being the first person I ever met on the men's team because he was just out on his own, kicking a ball, running to get that same exact ball, bringing it back and just doing that over and over again. And I would think like, wow, this guy just loves soccer. So yeah, um, that, I mean, his, his passing really hurt a lot of us, but uh, it just reminded us all to hold each other a little bit tighter to, come together in those moments mm -hmm. of weakness and those moments of pain and know that we can rely on each other because we had all, you know, lost someone that was dear to us in some way or the other. Anyone else? Yeah. Um, with his passing, I think it really showed how much of a family we had to become not just for the women's team, but also with the men's team. And along with that, it was just like one of the many things that was going on with like the whole, uh, the team as a whole. So with his passing, it just felt like we had, we had to play for him just because of how we saw that he was suffering and how he felt. And we just knew like deep down, like we have, we have to give our all as if Raji was going to give his all because he was fighting for his life so we felt like we had to fight on the field to you know honor honor him but also just to keep playing the game that we love and that he loved as well but it was it was definitely a difficult a difficult time and I don't think a lot of us was able to were able to really process his passing during the season itself it's just because everything was just it was just like one big go and we were just trying to focus but it was it was pretty difficult to focus during that time, honestly. So, and I guess Rodji did this like miracle with, uh, with that double championship with the men's and the women's team during that season, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean there were a couple goals where you you look at it and think, <laughs> did Rodji? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, talk about and that then, second and then, goal. I mean, second the second goal in the yeah. finals. I was like. Mm -hmm. You really set that up. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Christina. Go ahead. Yeah. No. Um. So. So it was a corner kick. Um. Which was crossed in by um one of our freshmen at the time. I think it was Cassie, and um Ella was able to tap it back in, and and the person who was um in the right wing who actually. Um, stepped up for Cali's position, BG, um, yeah. headed it in, right? So it was, like, you know, that entire game, like, especially at the start, was La Salle's yeah. completely. Like, they, they, they had all the attempts, they had all the, um, you know, technical skills to, to really bombard us with attacks, right? But for some reason, somehow, we were able to fight them off and eventually get our second goal in. So... I don't know. I was. I don't know how you guys felt. Did, I, just in that moment, it just felt like you know, Raji was there with us playing in a, in a way. In a way. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually gonna. I wanted to ask that. Yeah. So, when, uh, so start of the game was uh, Christina. Christina got the first goal early in the second half, right, with the penalty, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that next goal came in uh, as she described. Uh, yeah. But then again. The whole first half, it was totally Lasal. It was. It was was yeah. it during halftime? Was it, were there already adjustments from Coach Anto to like get more offensive with you guys, or if would you remember? Yeah. <laughs> wow, well, Christina, if you remember this, I'll be very impressed. Colby. <laughs> do I do actually? All I, all I, I do. can remember is our coach is like a heart. 
guy. Yeah. Um, it, it's because you know, like after halftime, you have like a fifteen minute period to like go down into the lockers and like reassess how you guys are playing the game, and you know, coming from the season before where we lost, and then and then now knowing that we were being barraged by like everything, all these attacks, and and we just were not playing our game in the first half. So yeah. I remember in the locker room. Of course, Coach Antal, like gave, I mean, his passion you could see as well. Like he, he was really frustrated, um, but he knew exactly what to say in terms of like um, what we're doing wrong technically, who has to move up, who has to move down. We were totally defensive and we weren't um, in any way uh, a danger to them in yeah. terms of attacking. And so, so, that, so out, most of the tactics revolved around like, being able to push up, being able to open up and, and move forward in the attacks. But at the same time, it was very emotional in the locker room. I might have broken a door at one point. <laughs> one of the locker oh, rooms. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, my God. <laughs> So you can charge I, 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 I go over the stadium for a, yeah. <laughs> for a cubicle door because I, I just – I wasn't having it. I mean, I knew that we were better. I knew that um, – at one point, we just had to make sure that we didn't let this slip through our fingers like the last year. So, so, and I knew that it was the last game for a lot of our seniors. It wasn't my last game, but it was a lot of other people's last games. I mean, if Molly was here, she could attest to that. But yeah, so, so coming back, um, w coming back onto the field after that locker room talk um, gave us the motivation, I think, to score. You know, and that's what we did in the first ten minutes. So, yeah. Yeah, and it showed. Uh, you guys played your game na during that second half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It showed yeah. naman. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, you got the championship. Um, so yeah, Levy, I think you have a question for them. Let's uh, head to you. Yeah, actually, I just want to go back to that second goal because that, that was amazing. That's a, That was an awesome sequence, corner kick, and then... If I'm not mistaken, it kind of looked like a bicycle kick, honestly. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> kinu lang lang, kinu finish, so there was another person there for the header. And that was it. Second goal, boom. And, and uh, like what we said, all season long, LaSalle was undefeated. But let, let's go back to perhaps the second round meeting that you had against LaSalle, because that was a draw. So from there, did you guys feel, now, okay, there, there are some things so that we can take advantage of or uh, as they say the what they call that like think in the armor that we can probably uh expose and when we meet again and of course you met again in the final and uh fair enough you won the championship mm -hmm. was it like that in the second round meeting where you at least held them to a draw at that point Now, uh, okay this team may be undefeated but they're not invincible uh at all What's yeah. the answer? Yeah, go. So, so I think um, there two, there's one thing that really played a role in it, especially um, during the rounds and the finals. The round, the the qualification rounds um, happened in Emperador in McKinley Stadium, right? Which is a much much smaller field compared to Rizal. And when when it's when we drew against LaSalle in a smaller field, because the way that um, LaSalle plays, they're very, very technical. They're super good at holding the ball and passing it around, right? And and to be able to hold your own in a small um, area like that, wherein they are a little bit more superior in terms of technical ability, really showed that maybe we could have a chance because we knew that, um, at least in our heads, we knew that we were fitter, we were faster. So in a bigger, uh, wider field, it, we would have a bigger advantage when it came to that. So, mm -hmm. so yes, it definitely felt like um, when we drew them in a smaller field at their, at their advantage, we felt like we had a, a better chance in the final. I don't know. Do, do you guys feel the same way? Re I, I'm not sure. You're confident. Yeah. 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 Well, definitely Coach Antol kind of gave us the game plan, of course, at um, before the second round game. And with that, it was more of, like, make sure to mark off the people who supply the plays. Like, you have to stop them. If you stop them, that's it. Like, that's it for them. Because that's really the people who are technically good, who are going to give either the assisting pass for the goal or shoot themselves from a long, like, from a far distance. So, 
I think when we remember those like little things, it helped. And it definitely helped, obviously, because we got a draw at the, um, that match. But when, like Christina said, when we definitely moved to the bigger field, it was it was almost like a no-brainer for us where it's easier for us because we felt like we were fitter and faster at that point because of the bigger space. Yeah, I think at that time we had BG, and if I'm not wrong, uh, was it Mary Rose on the other side? Yeah, yeah. So the two fastest people in the league. Yeah. Um, so they really are. Mary Rose is the quickest girl I've ever met and she just can do a run like no other I think LaSalle's strength was always in the middle you know they were very very technical as Christina said very sharp passes very uh I mean amazing passes really and they knew how to control the game in the middle um but we had really good runners and we had girls that could distribute really good long balls so that I think is where our some of our strengths came came in um you know but it was also hard because even when you get Mary Rose the ball, even if she has an open goal, man, there's still Ina Palasha. It's like, yeah. that girl is yeah. insane. God bless she her. Is. She, is, she, is. she is the the wall that Trump wants to put up. Like, she is the <laughs> one through. Like, I knew we were going to go political. Work. I knew you it. Gonna, everything yeah. is political. Everything is political. Yeah, sports girl. is political. If anyone tries to tell you sports is not political, they have never played a game in their life. That is so, so true. Ina yeah. was just insanity, you know? So mm -hmm. that was really, even if, you would make it past their incredible middle. You know, uh, Mary Rose could work her magic past a few of the defense. Maybe Angel was always hard to get through. But once you get to Ina Palacios, it's really just like, you know, the accuracy has to come in. And I remember the girls were really practicing their shots. Like, we, the weeks leading up to it, like, that's pretty much what they were doing every day after training was just shooting, 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 knowing that the finals would be LaSalle. Mm -hmm. So you have to, you, and it can't be just, like shooting a, a steady ball like no we had to practice every kind of opportunity and yeah some of them were mm -hmm. headers so thank god for for bg's mm -hmm. fancy fancy, fancy like, goal yeah. and <laughs> fancy footwork <laughs> <laughs> you know it's it's actually kind of interesting because say as athletes we mostly focus on just playing the game but then hearing you guys uh Talk about the, the strengths and weaknesses that you guys noticed with the other team. I mean, it's like, it's, kinda, it's so how much. Funny. Athletes, athletes are smart. Come on. <laughs> yeah, Come like, on. What are you talking about? We don't think about our opponents. I still think about my opponents every day in front of me. I'm like, oh, what's your weakness, honey? We've got a player and a med student. We're smart. We're smart. <laughs> I mean, I think yeah. as well. So, uh, I can attest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Christina, Christina's over here engineering. I don't know. Yeah, she's like, she's like, he's a passer. Christina's <laughs> a passer. <laughs> wow. Wait, Christina, you took up what? Uh, industrial engineering. Wow, okay. That's nice. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the lowest tier. <laughs> no, I can't say that. Still <laughs> engineering. Can't say that. You're can't still an engineer. <laughs> I don't even know what you do. <laughs> <laughs> engineering. Right, heading yeah, into, yeah. Heading back into that season, if I'm not mistaken, that was the only game you had in Rizal, right? Yes, yes, that and was. If I'm not mistaken, that's where Rizal trains. Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. That's the irony of it Which, all. You know, <laughs> the, like a bigger I mean, irony. We didn't, even have, we didn't even have a train on. What yeah. are you talking about? Yeah, we, I mean, this uh, is what we're going to ask Asana. See, I think like, Yella has a question like, on that. How many things you want to hit us with? Like, we <laughs> had all yeah, the problems probably, in the world. Yeah. PLS first first time experience with that thing. Uh well uh I, yeah, I can access to that. Ano ba? I took uh um touch football um as as one of my PE class. And um me and my best friend were casually because I, I play a little bit of football as well. Um we were casually um playing there. So one time um uh he he kicked a long pass, so I have to run to the end of the field. And then, when I when I'm about to um, make the pass to him, uh, I kicked a piece of a almost English nong palayok. Plant box, a piece of plant box. 
Wait, we're talking about the old UP field. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. That's the old. Yeah. Yeah. Behind, behind yeah. alumni. Yep. Yeah. yep. It's, it's, it's interesting to have both a baseball field and a football field put together. Yeah. So, so there are times that you're running with the ball and you're in grass, and then another time you're in like a fucking sandbox or something. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. I mean, and coming from coming from a place where we all know how, like, you know, good fields are supposed to be. You guys came from Bakersfield. You guys know, like, what kind of football fields are actually yeah. supposed to be nice, right? It it really tests your character, but at the same time, I mean, if you're able to go through grass, then mud, then grass again. I mean, I guess that makes you a better player. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you all been- terrain. Yeah. Man, it was so nice right. to like play a game. Playing playing games were so easy. I'd be like, uh, see, you have to think about stopping a ball, man. You're just like <laughs> absorb it and run yeah. rather than like it's watching not gonna, like, it. Bounce. During training, we would be like watching the ball. Like, oh my god, how's it gonna move? Where's the where's the yeah. last pump? I, yeah, where's, I the, where's that rock that I saw? So easy, dude. <laughs> I would just enjoy it. Be like, I'm just gonna chill during this game. Yeah, you actually games do a slide tackle, tackle in the game, uh, not, not in practice. Mean turf, not, not in practice. Yeah, yeah. Wait, I'm, I remember I'm we only had like Take one away. light. We only had like one light <laughs> while we were training as well, so <laughs> you could. <laughs> if you positioned yourself with your back towards oh, the light, there's nothing you can see. <laughs> <laughs> the worst, oh, the worst God, part is so if you're cute. a freshie and you have to get all the balls with the one you, bite. <laughs> you have to keep track. Like you have to no, eventually remember. And they, and they would like turn off the ball lights there, about, ball went there, about two there. minutes after training. As soon as training's called, two minutes, the lights are gone. So you gotta like, okay, ball A is over here, ball B is over here. And by the lights, by the time the lights are turned off, you're just like kind of feeling around, very Helen Keller. Like, what is? Where am I going? <laughs> It was messed up, man. That's you, P guys. I mean, <laughs> uh, oh, I should say, yeah. Heading into that, I want to transition na into your, like student life in UP. Uh, but first, I want to ask. I'm kind of curious, lang. How did you guys practice? What was the schedule for practice back then? Was it sabay with the men's team or separate pa rin? And what time do you guys yeah. have it? I think with go um, at least for me, um, I had two different coaches. So Coach Klang was like after classes so like 6 to 8 p.m yeah. whereas with, the light, um, with one light on the feast with one light with one light that turned off right after training so you don't know where your stuff is or the balls are or whatever um but with with coach Anta, he, he preferred morning trainings which i appreciated more actually because um you're up early and and you have the energy to you know actually do what you need to do but yeah uh, so six to, so i think it was six to eight in the yeah, morning yeah six yeah so most of the time we were beside the boys but sometimes the boys would be eight to ten so it really okay. depended uh sometimes but the boys in the afternoon just, but not one practice altogether I sometimes, 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 sometimes we practice together sometimes we train yeah. together uh, uh, sometimes like i know i know marie and i and christina used to run with the boys every once in a while when they did their acad ovals Mm-hmm. I don't take care uh, so, of the boys. Uh, yeah, you, don't, you don't do it. I don't do that. I was, trying to, I was trying to be, I didn't want to exclude you in that. I, I wasn't trying to call you out. I know Christina doesn't do extra work. I don't do running. I don't do running. Trying to get you do running. four years later. But yeah, yeah. And, and it was nice. It was, it, it was useful. It was helpful, especially to the women's team when we would train with the guys. Um, because there's, there's a lot of... I mean, when you train, even as a kid, when you when you play, it's always co-ed. Like yeah. when you play with guys and girls, and it really helps you um, understand the game better when you're playing with guys as well. Like I'm not gonna deny that. 
fact, they're like really, really good. So, so it helps motivate. And and then both Huff sisters used to run with them, which is <laughs> insane. I don't know how you can keep up with guys, but like they did it. So yeah, that's why. Yeah, what are you talking about? They couldn't keep up with me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry. Sorry. They couldn't keep oh up. Oh my with god. Me. Do you not remember oh the runs we used to do? Like. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this, Lily's all state, honey. Don't come at her. <laughs> She's all state, right, 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 right. So, so Marie and well, Kathy, the um, runners in in America. Oh, okay. Before you guys were football players, right? Or were yeah, you guys born? That was the first. Was the the first Marie's all state. One of her. So, so they, they're they're super fast, like insane. <laughs> yeah. That's why. That's why the. The runs are That's like, why the boys couldn't keep up with them. Yeah, yeah. You know. They still can't. They still can't. And I'm not talking about running anymore. <laughs> okay, Wait. guys. What's your story to at all? Levi, I think you have questions for them. School life. Student life, yeah. No, I, I know we guys are having fun talking about the field and all that. And uh, just to be clear, we're not in any way trashing the UP admin or what, but it's, 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 it's important to bring this up because during your time, uh, Kali, Marie, it's it's very important for athletes to also speak up uh, regarding these issues. I, I saw, we're from LB, of course, Pim and I, but we saw the pictures. It's it's really terrible. The field is terrible. And it's, it's not in proper condition. So how important is it for you guys as athletes to at least raise these issues of course, the authorities and tell them that, you know what, we deserve better. I mean, we made the finals last year and eventually you guys won championship that season. And so trying to set some sort of a precedent and you know, leaving a legacy in the rent for the players who will play after you guys. I bet Kali I mean, has an it's, answer. Oh, so you go ahead. Yeah, she does. I'll, I'll, I'll she does, first. she does. It's like how you can chill <laughs> first. She needs, she needs to chill. She needs to chill for a quick sec. <laughs> But um, <laughs> what's sad? What's sad is we never got the chance to play on that turf. That's actually there now. Oh, you know, even after the championship, there was no field. We still had to commute to Marikina, commute to BGC. It was an everyday thing. It was there. There wasn't a field in UP, but until up until even until after I graduated, I don't think there was a field just yet. Maybe towards the end of 2018, like right before graduation, but it wasn't anything that we got to really like experience. Like, oh, wow, there's turf in UP, like the field's amazing now. I mean, even maybe it's not the best turf, but it's definitely better than the crap we had to go through. Yep. Like the mud, the, you know, it's just everything like with rocks and even the time when we, that field was gone completely behind Bahay ng alumni, we had to try the sunken garden because a lot of us had classes early in the morning. So coach tried to consider like, you know, they can't make it from Marikina. And we, we need to make sure that they're still upholding their grades and like their grades are still good because at the end of the day, if you don't have the grades, you can't play. You're a, stu- you're a student athlete. Like that's, you know, it's impossible. But when we moved to the fair, like the sunken garden, the fair had just ended. So it was a mess. In oh, shit. And it's all. <laughs> there were condoms. Oh, there were condoms. Like, oh. It was, it was <laughs> very, yeah. There were so many condoms. <laughs> to put it lightly, I, there were condoms. There, 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 there was trash. Like, you know, check positive, man. Like, go we, for it. <laughs> we, it's, it's, it's an experience, I guess, but. It That's got to a point you. where we even joined a cleanup <laughs> to clean up the fa- like to clean up the fair. Like it was just we didn't have we didn't really have a choice. Like we had to mentally push through with everything that was going on, and it's just the field was just one of the many problems in terms of like the grand scheme of things. It's just God, <laughs> but yeah, Cali, go. Your <laughs> <laughs> time to shine. <laughs> I mean, before I say anything, I really have to thank, you know, Senator Pia Cayetano. I mean, God bless her for coming in and really saving the day. Like, I was just so amazed at her ability to just, well, soothe me. I was always angry about it. But, I mean, she just came in and really made sure that there were going to be funds 
for not just us, but for the next, you know, however many years that turf field will last. And you'll get real talent coming into UP because of her. And she's now working on the baseball and softball field. Bless her heart because, I mean, the baseball and softball team have not had a field since, I guess, 2015. Like, that's insanity. Every yeah. single person on that team has never had a field. So they're using their own money for transport. They're using their own money to get to where they have to go, taking hours out of their day and to play for a school that's never going to recognize that, never going to reimburse them. God knows it. Um, I think if you mm. ask me, like, what I would have to say to the athletes about this and to even the administration, I think first the athletes um, that, you know, never be afraid to talk about what you think you deserve. I mean, yes, you do get a scholarship. Yes, you do get very, very meager allowance. That doesn't mean that all your other rights should be overlooked. That doesn't mean that you just get to be treated like, for lack of a better word, crap every other part of the day. When you get injured, you are entitled reimbursement. And it's unfortunate that you have to keep following up, following up, following up. But make sure you get what you are due. Um, with a field, you deserve a safe environment, you know? And it's the school's duty, um, not just in the VAS contract, but even them also having a responsibility over the students to ensure that the environment that they play in, that they study in, are all safe for them. So, you know, you have uh, stories like people, you know, messing around, touch football and twisting their ankle or whatever. Like me, I retore my ACL multiple times during that one season. You know, Stevie had an ACL issue. Uh, Mary Rose had an MCL thing. Everyone had knee problems. And don't tell me it was because of something we were all eating. Like, no, honey. It was <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and so to the athletes, all I'm saying is like, you know, you deserve to be heard. And no one's going to tell you, oh, like, let's sit down and talk about your issues. Like, no, you need to make them known. Do it in every possible way you can. I mean, I got, I certainly got so much crap for it for running my mouth apparently and I was always told I was the issue I was yelled out of so many admin offices that to this day I'm like I'm not I'm never going to be ashamed for that because it got people to recognize that this was a serious MF issue okay and I will never apologize for that all I can say is is that if you're an administrator and you're yelling at a student for pointing out your flaws then maybe you should reassess what you're doing with your life Maybe, yeah. it's not, uh, maybe you should check, check yourself. yourself and recognize that you have a duty to protect your students. And I'm never going to apologize for putting stuff on the internet and showing this is what's going on in campus because I never attack a single person in the administration. What I said was y'all need to do something about it. And I'm not going to be faulted for y'all not doing anything about it. Um, but yeah, I will thing. say, I think athletes in particular have an immense opportunity to uh, be role models, um, not just for other people on campus. Like, I'm not going to lift up the soccer team being like, oh, we're gods because we won one championship four years ago. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to say that about, you know, whatever else teams there are that you should act like you're hot, whatever. But I will say to the, to the people coming in, to the younger generation playing soccer, the young generation playing volleyball, basketball, baseball, whatever it is, you know, you are someone of significance to them and you are someone that they want to be one day. And so you should use this opportunity you have as a college athlete to voice your concerns, not just about school politics, about national politics, whatever the hell, and use it responsibly as well. Because, you know, as at Lesson Bayan, you are representing the UP, the state university, and your experience your talent and everything you've accomplished in life to get there. Um, I mean, that's all building towards your perspective and you should a hundred percent talk, talk about your perspective online or whatever medium you find. Sylvie <sighs> and, and PL, you, you guys opened a can of worms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Don't get upset like, because I'm like, don't I'm talk about reimbursement. Why are you yelling, are you yelling yeah. at me about the fact that I'm not reimbursed? The fact that my team yeah. is screwing? Like, I will not just the truth. take that yeah. crap. Yeah. It is the truth. It is the truth. And and honestly, like, 
UP is a UP is academics before it is um, yep. athletics, right? Like we all know that, yeah. and 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 there were times that you know my college professors would give me crap about being an athlete as well because I and I and I quote verbatim. This one professor said, you cannot do both. You are not allowed to do both because you have to pick one and stick to one. And you can't be an athlete if you want to be um, in, in UP and stuff like that. And, and a lot of people look down on us, which is kind of terrible to say. But to be honest, student athletes are the most well-rounded people I know. They're the only people I would hire, to be honest, right now. Because like it's, it's, it encompasses not just you know s smart like street smarts and, and knowing what you have to do and being a team player and all that. And, and honestly, we are, we, we deserve better, to be honest. Yeah. We just deserve better. But yeah. You know, what's interesting is all the issues that you guys brought up. It's just the issues of the football team. I'm sure the other sports <laughs> would have their own issues. Oh, yeah. Now, God yeah. bless baseball and softball, man. Yeah. I don't know how they do it. God bless them. If anyone from baseball softball teams watching, I pray for you guys every single night. I swear to God. <laughs> bless <laughs> up. I'm so sorry. I don't know why they screwed you over so bad. But, yeah, you're talking about table tennis, chess, you know, all these sports that are so overlooked. Badminton, tennis, like every single of the minor sports you know, are always overlooked. And they they talk about, oh, well, now we have an alumni association and they do everything. I'm like, honey, that's also not their responsibility. Yeah. And where do you think they're putting their money? It ain't even to football. And football's a the world love sport, whatever. I won't say specifically where it's going because <laughs> I, I now know what the crime of libel is. But let me tell you, it's not going to any of the... <laughs> Whatever. All I'm saying is, like, uh, there just needs to be not just a recognition of how hard these athletes work, um, but really how much they're sacrificing and how much they're spending of their own money. And, man, just do everything you can to protect them. I'm, I, I, I really think I'm, I'm so surprised that no one from baseball and softball has freaking burned down school yet. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, yo, that patience is like. But when, like a legit student leader, uh, Kali, I think you would get it. It's better to take a sip right now, whatever you're drinking it there. <laughs> Just take a breath, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm saying it. I'm saying into this narrative that Kali's not even mad. Angry. She's not mad. She's, it's like, it's, she's not she's mad right up, now. This isn't even up. mad. She's warming up. She's warming up. She's just. Right. <laughs> Yeah. As, we, as, we've always, <laughs> as we've always been hearing say UP, uh, UP is a, a microcosm of society, Philippine society at that. I mean, um, I, I share sentiments since I came from football as well. I started with football actually in Zabel before I went to basketball. So, I mean, so I get... Your varsity at UPLB for football. For, for oh, a while. Not uh, much. Yeah, UP is fine. It's still... But yeah, I mean, the reason why I'm saying this is because uh, I think all schools in the Philippines experience this type of issue now. All the attention goes to basketball and all the other sports just like... Oh, oh we are allowed to what? say it? Oh, well, I, I didn't say it. I, I didn't say it. I said it for you guys. I said it for you guys. It was me. It was me. I said it for you guys. Like, why? We're not okay. even talking. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean... Well, since it, this is a UP show, I mean, like, it's, it's, it's good yes, for you. Know? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you see the Gilas program uh, getting all this type of attention of all financial support, but then yeah. there was a, 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 tournament, a tournament now we didn't really win anything. So, uh, I think a couple Which of years one? back, it was an international tournament, uh, FIBA something. World I mean, Cup? Yeah, probably that one. Yeah, World Cup. So, yeah, I mean, it goes everywhere, yeah, not just in the okay. I would say. So, I'm not taking the blame out of the, the admin and other stuff who puts their money in basketball. But then, because if, if you're, if you're a, like an investor... It's a, no, it's, it's the Philippines' most loved sport, yeah, and no yeah. disrespect. And I will say, I think out of all the, the players, sometimes I do feel the... I feel really bad for the basketball players because their value is based off of how good you are. And as soon as 
you know, you get injured as soon as you don't live up to the expectations, you're thrown aside. And so sometimes I do feel bad for them. Um, But then sometimes I don't, you know, (laughs) it'd be like that sometimes. Um, No, but this is not, this is not a, this is not an attack on, on any particular team. All I'm saying is that, um, you know, we do have to look at our potential in all sports um, and not just on a world stage. uh, You know, how are these, and, and even if it is on a world stage, is it really only basketball that we can get there? You know, boxing, um, weightlifting have proven to be uh, really a sport that we can excel. Football, hopefully one day, is a sport where we can excel. The women's national soccer team has made so many strides. Um, and, you know, you look at other sports, uh, badminton, table tennis, chess, really there should be more money going there. So I'm not blaming the college administration for for anything in particular, all I'm saying is that, um, you know, we do have to develop all sports because there are kids that are looking to get into all of them, not just in basketball and not just for fame. They want to go to college. Um, they want to go to college that will take care of them. They want to go to college where they won't have to pay for any injury that they might accrue. They want to go to a college where they feel safe. And that to me is the most important concern. It's about getting those kids an education So making sure that they can play the sport they love in a safe environment and that they can do it in a way that they don't just represent the school. They also are able to um, be safe while doing so. Okay. Very well said. said? Yep, Um, very well said, of course. I I wish my prof said that to me this morning, homie. (laughs) 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 We'll address it, but yeah. Let's just take a step back once again and just bring this this conversation (laughs) to you guys. uh, what, Levi, you want to talk about there, no? your extra, extracurricular outside the uh, football as well? If everybody has. Yeah, well, yeah, before before we head to that, I think it's uh, it's also a bit of a uh, uh, how do you call that? Just at least we're uh, bringing these issues into attention because yeah. it's it's really difficult to be a UP student athlete and then I'm being specific here now UP student athlete because okay not in any way disrespecting athletes from other universities but you know we, we know that obviously to be order in order to be a UP student athlete obviously you need to get to UP first which is by passing the OPCAT or transferring shifting or you have to wait this MUNA things like that and after that once you're inside UP uh, it doesn't end there. You have to be obviously you have to maintain your grades and 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 these stories we've we've heard this from our other guests before. And during their time, you know they have bunker dorms and that's it. You know they commute to their practice uh, gyms, practice spots, so on and so forth. And this has been happening until now. Even even the volleyball team when I was still covering, uh, they have their own water jugs. I mean, can you imagine? Other teams have their Gatorade. Uh, yeah. malaking, you know, uh, coolers. They have their own whole <laughs> man, water jugs, or even the recycling. We can't bowl. relate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they have to bring their own water jug. Uh, I mean, yeah. I'm not even gonna comment on that. <laughs> and I feel like there there might be bigger happen. problems out there, bro. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, but but go ahead, Levy. We'll we, yeah, 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 sorry. But, sorry. <laughs> No, but we're just putting things into perspective. But obviously, we all have, uh, I mean, each sport has uh, their own issue. And these are serious issues. But yeah, uh, talking about the extracurricular stuff. Uh, and this is something I can uh, closely relate to with uh, Kali and Marie. Because I myself ran under... Uh, the Red Political Party in UP Los Baños, Ocbayan. So you guys ran, understand UP. And talk about that experience. Just, of course, juggling. Now you're juggling a lot more things, just not just athletics and mm. uh, student life, but now adding the student council dimension to that. Talk about like that year, just doing all of that. So, Point Carly, first. go first. Yes, go Carly. On. Okay, go. Okay. Yeah. Um... I will say, man, that was like the greatest honor that Stan UP allowed me to bless their hearts. And I have so much love for them and so much respect for what they do up until now. Um, Man, uh, I think that during that time, it was actually after the season 77 finals. 
Um, sorry, can you guys hear me? I, I yeah. think I'm like, might yeah, be frozen. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good, good, sorry. So it's right after the season 77 finals and someone, uh, his name's Albi, he went, we were, they were doing a room to room and had, uh, they were talking about a human, a human chain that they wanted to do out of respect for the um, 44 staff fallen members. Uh, this was obviously back in, I think it was 2016, 2015. Um, 15, yep. four staff members who had fallen and so I went to him and I was like you know I really love what you guys are doing uh, count me in so I showed up that day and then I was talking to them about the about political party I didn't realize elections were coming up but I had already become a member like I was uh, joining a lot of their other rallies and they talked to me about potentially running and I was like well, I mean, as long as it doesn't interfere with soccer, like, what's, what do I got to do? Um, and it was just the most exhilarating experience of my life, learning from those other student leaders. Uh, I had um, uh, Menchani and Miko were the standard bearers. Uh, and, you know, Beata Carolino, Brio Liano were also counselors. Uh, man, they just were... So uh, just absolute outstanding student leaders. So during that experience, I learned so much about the students, about the about UP, about national issues, and I still carry that uh, desire to learn to this day. Um, and I think juggling everything, it wasn't actually that much harder because I was already used to juggling soccer and school and all this other stuff. And so just adding one more thing to the mix, just really about time management. Um, but it was a different kind of passion. I've always been very, very competitive, always, in everything I do. But um, this was a, a new side of competitiveness for me. So You ran for what fun. specifically? USC. I ran for counselor, USC counselor. USC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you stayed there for mm -hmm. just a year? or Just one year. And Marie as well? I ran the following year under the same party for the same position. Okay. But definitely, I would say my sister definitely paved a way for me to be able to run. And she really supported me because honestly, if I didn't have her to help me, I would be clueless. Yeah, she's all blushing right now. But it's true. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it, it was really an honor to run Understand UP. It was an honor to serve the students. It was an honor to represent not just a student, but also the athletes and the council as well. But it was it was interesting because it was happening basically the same time the season was going on. So not only was yeah, I staying same. up really late to like you know listen to the like the notes of what's going to happen for the next day or what's the game plan for the like whole campaign season. The next morning I would show up basically 5 a.m. to make sure I was at the field to train and then after that shower, get ready, go campaign. And then go to class, campaign, go to class, campaign. And it was like until 8 p.m., 10 p.m. And then you go back and you review and then you sleep. And it's just the whole cycle all over again. The, I, honestly, the campaign season was the hardest part just because of the games happening. And you have, you have to really time manage your whole day. If you don't, you might forget to eat. You might forget to think like about something. And all these kinds of... And all these kinds of questions come up out of nowhere and you really have yeah. to be prepared. And even before the campaign season, we were already preparing. It's, it's basically like a year round thing. Like you're constantly learning, you're constantly reviewing, you're constantly preparing yourself. And I honestly never thought I would end up in this position just because of what I was told back in private school. Like who am I to represent the students if Back then, people, like, automatically, it was already thought of, you're not going to survive. You're not going to be able to do, like, how can you be a yeah. UP? Like, it wasn't, it wasn't a thing. And so when it actually happened, it was also, like, a boost of confidence, thinking, like, I can actually do this, and I'm happy to be able to do this, and I'm honored to. And it's just immense pride to be able to serve, serve the people at the end of the day. And it's something that you continue doing even in your professional life and uh, like after grad, you serve the people. Marie's actually also in the student council now in med school, yeah. also oh. a counselor. Okay. So really? 
it's really in you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that yeah. Usually happens, tama. Uh, women's football happens second sem, right? Second sem, then uh, campaign season starts. I think around Feb is. Yeah. Yeah, around the February. Fair time that was the fair. Mm. Uh, academic shift. March, yeah. March, March April. There's, yeah. This was the, the, the old March, calendar. No? Yeah, correct. March, April for us. Mm. Ah, okay. mm. The old calendar is a bit earlier and then it kind of just shifted a month yeah. forward. I actually ran for USC as well. <laughs> My freshman did. Oh, yeah? <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> but I lost. Uh, I was under the party, partnered with... What's uh, your name, Levy? What's your name, Blusa Diliman? Uh, Alianza. Alianza. I was. Alianza. Alianza. Sorry. <laughs> we with them sa sa Los Banos, but yeah, it it was a definite uh, learning experience. I learned so much. Na I didn't really know back then, back in Zobel now, where in you don't really care about these yeah, types of issues, you know. <laughs> so when I, when I when I enter that type of uh, like training, it's it literally opened up my eyes. Yeah. I mean, just being in UP opened up my eyes already, but then heading into that, uh, like. How do you say it? Like, it even blew it up even more. So, yeah. I, I think um, it was, like, also during that time where I was – I did a consultation with every single team. Well, I think I, I – pretty, pretty much every single team showed up. Maybe just, like, three or four didn't show up. But each consultation was, like, an hour and a half. And I was, like, talking to them about, you know, what's going on with your team? Like, you know, uh, how much uh, funding do you guys get? Like, what kind of shoes do you get? What kind of materials do you guys get? How uh, for uh, Badman and I remember they were telling me that I don't know what you call them the birdies I don't know the technical term the you know doo, 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 that thing <laughs> <where you> throw. <laughs> and then like they only get a certain number and then that certain number is usually <laughs> gone after like two trainings whatever after like two trainings and so you know you open, <laughs> my eyes were so open to all these teams that were having even worse issues than we were yeah. and you know trying to connect them not just with alumni but trying to bring those issues to the administration uh to people that could actually help them so i think that's really where i i was just appalled with how prevalent the issues were um but yeah it, so it does open you your were, eyes that you were you were assigned to like not assigned but like you you uh handled the athletes of UP I mean, I was your- technically sports, fitness, and health committee, and people okay. kind of generalize okay. that as, okay, you're going to take care of athletes. Yeah. No, the, the yeah. whole purpose yeah. is really for the benefit of everyone. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, you know, but I, I think until this year, the varsity really didn't have any representation because even the CHK representative shouldn't even be really looking at the varsity issues because... I mean, the varsity office is underneath CHK, but, you know, they don't really have representation. There's no varsity person in the student council in CHK to take care of their issues. So up until this year, there was no real varsity representation. Um, And I just kind of took on that role. And I don't think, I I mean, obviously not everyone in the varsity voted for me. Not everyone in campus voted for me, Mm -hmm. but... Uh, That's a lie. Someone needed. <laughs> someone needed to. I don't know. Yeah, run my big sure. It was. Christina, it was hard Christina for her to win. For me. It was yeah. hard for her to win. I thought it was a landslide. I thought it. No, I, no, no. It was. It was different. It was different for Callie's year. It was really. It was really tough for her to win. I think she made either the ninth slot or the tenth slot. I was the last slot. one. No, I was oh, the very last. So, I was number okay. twelve, and only oh, by so like 12. I want to say like ten votes. So it was, yeah, it was really close. Hard. It was really close. Yeah. Yeah. Where were you? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I, I was so surprised I got it. I heard Beata and Brian and then one more person and I was like, oh, it ain't me because they're, they're, those, those two are like here and I'm like not even in the screen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. How, how about you, Christina? Did you have like orgs back then and did you join any or was it purely football lang for you? No, no, no. Well, I, I, uh, one sec. There's a truck passing by. So, <laughs> so the garbage truck comes every 10 p.m. in Bel Air. Anyway, um, so yeah, I tried it out. I put my hand in, um, orgs, you know, and, and I, I tried out IE Club, which is, um, the first choice for industrial engineers as a club. And I got in. 
but I guess I, I, I couldn't, I'm not as good as the Huff sisters when it comes to time management. Cause like, I, I want like, um, my own time to sleep. I, I, I like my sleep and these guys work like fucking robots. <laughs> they stay up all night, they, you know, and both lawyers and med, med students. Right. So, um, I, I tried IE club and it was a good process. Like it, it, it it allowed me to understand the student life in UB because as an athlete, you don't really get to know other students in UB. I don't know how you guys, I mean, you guys were in council, right? So I don't know, but then I wasn't the most popular person. So I, I didn't have friends outside of athletics, right? Like if I didn't have friends in engineering at all, Sorry. like what? I didn't know a single person. No friends. In class, like, yeah, no friends. I would come into class late. I didn't know anyone because I mean, when you're when you're, you're inspiring student, so many young girls right now. To get <laughs> very nice I want you to know, to know that you, you have an issue with friendly. women in STEM, Christina. <laughs> Fix your yeah. ass. There's an issue in STEM right now with women, but 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 I mean, yeah. So so I I tried doing this or thing um, with 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 just students and not student athletes and and it was nice it was eye opening like i remember we had an amazing race to the, you know those kinds of things to get into the org and you had to go around <laughs> like fucking kalayan or or moonleaf or whatever and, and it was nice but it wasn't it wasn't uh, something that i could sustain and and i know that uh, if there's one thing i'm good at it's prioritizing so I had to drop. <laughs> I dropped that and and focused on just academics and football. So, but I wish I wish I tried out for USC. I don't know though. I don't think I would get in. Callie Marie, do you think I would get in USC? <laughs> uh, maybe. As long as Callie, as long as Callie is your campaign manager. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah. There you go. Oh, oh she left. She go. Yeah. Just kidding. Yeah, she don't. She wants internet be campaign manager. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, her internet connection probably, but she'll probably yeah, hop back uh, on. Yeah. Oh, there she is. Oh, there she is. Yeah. 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 All right. Very well, Christina, how how long did that last? I mean, that. Uh, um, I think the the um audition. How do you say it? When you're trying to <laughs> um. Uh, the process. Process. Yeah. The process. process. Yeah. Process. Oh. Yeah. The process. Yeah. 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 You yes, were apping yes, that, yeah. that thing. It's not additions. <laughs> but like it, it took about two or the three months. The application process? The yeah, application yeah. process. Yeah. 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 Anyway, I auditioned for this. <laughs> and it took about two or three months. And I remember there was the final process where, where you have to stand there and say the mission and vision of the org and stuff like that. And I had no clue <laughs> what was happening. For some reason, I got in. And then, oh, okay. uh, and then I had to I had to um, tenure my resignation after a month because I, I could not keep up. It's so <laughs> difficult. And then I applaud you guys for being able to have orgs and football and academics at the same time. I cannot. This is difficult. But yeah, I mean, to all the children out there that want to be me, <laughs> don't join. <laughs> That's the bottom line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is crazy. Like you can see the disparity between um, characters between me and the Huff sisters, right? Like it's, 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 We're all three different people. <laughs> We're very different people, but we do play together very, very nicely. Ah, oh, yeah, man, I miss it. <laughs> oh. Oh. Cheers, guys. Did you guys have orange, though? Cheers. Cheers. Uh, I had a frat, actually. I mean, L- oh, let me yeah. and then you yeah. guys in USC but Piel how, how are you actually I was uh, part of Miko's frat I was um, Alpha Sigma and you I had yeah, yeah. I see you Alpha Sigma it's pretty cool okay and I had three orgs but I wasn't active on Ooh. anything <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Um, it's getting kind of long already. So before we wrap this up, uh, I mean, the stories are really great. I really like. Parang dapat niya magparty tayo for this one, eh. Including Molly. Sa <laughs> <laughs> the, the questions that we wanted to ask Molly. Sa ane, so we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully, we can get you guys back here. Um, yeah, so, oh my gosh, Molly! Molly is a mother now. She should not be answering <laughs> the questions. 
I mean, and we all predicted. She was her her we all predicted she would one be day. the <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we knew that she would get knocked up first. That's for sure. <laughs> 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 I just want to ask you. They said it. I did it. Just to be fair, <laughs> Cal- Callie and Christina said it, not me. Yeah, we were taking bets. We were taking bets. Molly, Blanca, we love here. you if you're seeing this one day. Yeah, uh, Blanca. But there's this is one question that we we wanted to ask her, Sana. Because, right, after that season seventy eight, the mythical eleven were mostly composed of Lasalle players. Mm-hmm. Then again, Molly most won the MVP. The yeah, yeah, most yeah, of the most awards. Most of the right. awards. Even the previous mm-hmm. season, most of the awards, we didn't even get a single award. Even though we were second place, if yeah. you think about it. Like, hardly any of the awards ever went to us. But yeah. at the end of the day, it didn't really matter. Yeah, I yeah. actually, I never got an award. I, I, just, <laughs> yeah, I never got an award, Fala. And I remember, she's in 77. <laughs> except for Marie's penalty goal in the finals. I was part of every single goal. Like, I... Wow. I, scored, I either scored or assisted every single goal, and I did not get. They were like, "Cool, thanks. Try again next year." I was like, "Awesome." But, but yeah, Yunya, what's your what's your take on uh, Molly winning that MVP during that year, despite not getting she it won it every for, uh, single year? She deserved it. She deserved it. She should have won it every single year. Molly is yeah. the most talented player I've ever seen in my um, life. She's so consistent. I I don't think I've ever seen Molly make a mistake, honestly. Well, in life, yeah. yes, but like not on the. She is so consistent. She she she's like the God eighty mother. pounds. She has like eighty pounds. I swear to God, she's like eighty pounds, but she will throw that eighty pound body all over the field yeah. just at the possibility of stopping somebody. Like she's insane. Yeah, and, and I think that is the word for it, right? I mean, you know, in different positions in football, at least, you you have um, people that are eccentric and people that show off in terms of goals. Like, everyone's going to fucking block. Yeah, Christina. Yeah, no, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is the audience. Christina like, Carrie-Bigger. Yeah, the, I am carrie but the, the audience likes to see um, goals, really nice balls, really nice passes, right? But no one ever really notices the, the, the defense much. Yep, yep. And, but, but that is yeah. the hardest position to play. It is, you have to be consistent. You have to be on top of your game. You have to know where the attackers are going 100% of the time. And so with that being said, I feel like Molly was the only one that could ever really meet that standard. And for that, I think she really deserved it. She really deserved it. When it comes to the mythical 11 or 12 or whatever, though, that's a shitload of politics. <laughs> if you look at the statistics... Yeah. Of most, Actually, any of the awards, any of the... Most of the yeah, awards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and that... Year, mythical 11. Yeah. yeah. And, and I've had my fair share. It's political. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've, I've had my fair share of individual awards as well, especially when I was younger, uh, like my first few years of college. I did win those awards, but I will tell you, it's political. And yeah. I, I honestly think that our team deserves a little bit more, especially if you just look at the numbers. But when it comes to the MVP, Molly won that hands down. Hands down. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I think all the time for, for like – UAP football, there's always this like uh, notion that there's something up with the awards. You know? so if you look at international yeah. international leagues, and I, I think it's I think it also gets a little bit more contentious because you know we don't have the player of the game, best assister yeah. of the yeah. today, best gamer of the week. Like you know, yeah, some sports right. literally yeah. have like twelve awards in a week. Like no, yeah. us, it's just <laughs> that's it for the season. Just, and just at the end. So, right? At, it's just at the end, and um, say for best uh, striker, um, that's really just uh, off of uh, your most goals. goals. Everything else, everything else is just all either voted by the coaches or by other people in the league, and it's just I, I don't know. I hardly ever agree with it. Um, yeah, but, but then you're not even supposed to name it best striker, or, like best goalkeeper. You're supposed to like the golden boot or like uh, most yeah. sheet, something like that. Okay. Kind of referred to it as that, but it's like the main title is like best striker, and then 
but at the yeah, end to be honest with semantics don't really still. impress me yeah, but if you think about it how, how do you like say you're the best <laughs> without any like stats to back it up or like just to show that yeah there's nobody like <laughs> how many times can you count the assists like there's yeah. nobody counting yeah. nobody your <laughs> who counts <laughs> like us my dad oh god i love my dad so much he would like mark down every time we did a turnover every time the other team did a turnover he'd mark down all the assists so he was the one that oh, was really wow. like you guys had a 40 percent turnover rate or whatever <laughs> i'm like thanks god i just wanted you to tell me i had three great goals but <laughs> Yeah, yeah, analytics pala sila, you know, in, in Yeah, chat. so my, unless, unless you're asking my yeah. dad, nobody else does that. <laughs> okay, okay, see, okay. Yeah. Again, I'm enjoying so much with this, you know, with this episode. But it's getting kind of late and we don't want to, like, hold you back pa. If you want to come oh. back, you're always welcome, guys. I mean, I'm really happy to have you guys here. Hopefully, you have Molly in the back then, uh, during that time. Oh, okay. Um, siguro just to fill <laughs> us in. Talk to us, na, what are you guys doing right now? Uh, how has it been uh, after college, life after college? Uh, and to a message to the UP fans, uh, the UP students uh, who followed you th- throughout your, your career when you, when you guys were still playing. Uh, Kali, I, I suppose you want to start this one. <laughs> Everyone always assumes I have the biggest mouth. What's true? <laughs> Um, so right right now, I'm back in school. I'm studying law in FEU now, oh. which is fun. I know it's, it's a wild, it's a wild like turn of from playing against them to now I am now a Tamara. Um, so I'm in my second year of law school. I'm also, I'm also Sorry. working as a paralegal. Um, and yeah, that's also a lot of fun. So I've been doing that for about uh, eight months now. Okay. And I've been involved in the research for the um, anti-terrorism petition, so that's been super exciting. Um, I also coach uh, beauty queens, actually, so that's new wow. for me. I coach wow. question and answer for beauty queens, specifically with aces and queens. I love I've been enjoying to beauty queens. That. <laughs> can, we, can we go with you? <laughs> what? what was it? No. <laughs> no, the, the girls are absolutely amazing. Um, I also... What else? Um, and I and I teach uh, indoor rowing. Well, I used to before the pandemic. Um, lately, I've just been doing a lot of online uh, hit classes. So I'm a fitness instructor as well. And Ooh. that's, I mean, all of it has been just so fulfilling in so many different ways. Uh, with law school, it's something I've always really wanted to do. And it's really filled this desire in me to um, give back to the community, to uphold uh, certain sectors' rights to keep the the fight going on in a different way, um, and with the fitness aspect of it, you know, I've always just been ma- wanting to make sure that my mental and physical health is in check, and it's really helped me do that as well. Um, with the girls, uh, absolutely adore the ladies, and it's um, not only helped me hone my own public speaking skills and hopefully one day when I become a litigator, it would contribute to that. It's also really great just to share knowledge, um, not just about national issues, but about anything under the sun, because I also do a lot of gender sensitivity trainings. We talk about that. So that's fun. Um, and yeah, just all these different things are, I, I just find fulfillment in all of them. So I, I think I'm in a good place. I'm, I'm happy. Unfortunately, not playing a lot of soccer. Uh, before the pandemic, I would just play like once a week at the village, but you know, now you just can't touch anybody, so it be like that. Um, if I have a message to UP fans, if, I don't. I could if really she has any, Just kidding. I, I know. I was going to say I get really surprised that I'm you sure guys you have. actually remembered me. Come on. Like people are like, oh, I watched <sighs> you one time. I'm like, I I get absolutely shocked because yeah, I didn't. The camera was always on you because you were like on the referees all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's accurate. That's accurate. No, 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 for no other reason other than I'm just like. <laughs> yeah. you know, but, um, I I just want to say thank you so much for your support of women's football. Um, it is a beautiful sport and it is still growing. And I think there is a lot more room for it in the country. And I hope to any uh, girls that are looking to play for UP mm-hmm. football or to Athenaeo or whatever UAAP team you go to. 
Um, I really hope that you just respect the game, that you love the game, and that you do your part in not just educating others about the beauty of the game, but also reaching out to your fellow students with the platform that you have and speaking on issues that are, are important to you because you have a right, you have a platform, and more important than that, you have a responsibility. So thank you, UP fans and soccer fans and fans of Cali. Follow me <laughs> on Instagram. No. <laughs> yeah, st oh still very active. Uh, I think, I'm, I'm sure you get inspired a lot of people in Cali. Uh, Time management, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, she's still doing it, guys. She's still doing it. She's still at it. I mean, I'm just curious, what campus of FE are you in? Um, I'm in FEU Makati. So no one, there's uh, uh, a along campus. Along with Dia. Yes, yes, yeah, just here. Right. Perfect. Uh, now, your... now everyone knows my address. So if <laughs> I have any stalkers out there, great. <laughs> you just go to like, you go to Saddle Row, right? Or was it, what do you think? Yeah, you... so I, I was yes. working in Saddle Row up until, just, up until March, obviously, with the pandemic. You, you just enrolled in one of her classes there and like see her there. <laughs> okay. Well, once you go, yeah, you see that. go ahead. Sorry, is it me? Yeah, if you're... Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry. Um, right now, I am working. Um, I did not go into a vocational course like law school and med school like these guys. I'm not as impressive. Um, but I do work in Lazada right now. And mm -hmm. as a senior... You're impressive. <laughs> I yeah, still so don't know what you do. You're so <laughs> impressive. And <laughs> engineering and like... You're too okay. too smart for us. We we live about a kilometer away from each other, <laughs> house, but we need to see each other soon, Chris. Yes, yes. He's there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tell yeah. Your brother, yeah. I say hi. Yeah, this is this is um my girlfriend Tavva. Hey. hey. Hello. <laughs> so that's that's what I'm doing right now. I'm <laughs> I'm working. You're doing I'm working. I I live with my girlfriend and my brother. I just got a cat and all these, you know, all these, uh, simple things. And, and, you know, I feel like college best days of your life. You really feel like hot shit, especially when you're an athlete. Um, but there's a lot more to look forward to and a lot more that you can contribute to society the way Kelly was saying. And so I'm excited for that. And hopefully, I don't know, once this MECQ is over, we, mm -hmm. we all, to hang out one of these days and just like reminisce, reminisce for more than two hours on a Zoom call. You know yep, what I mean? Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> and do like an That's actual it. cheers. An actual cheers. Yeah, an actual <laughs> cheers. I'm, I'm actually out, but I'll refill. Cheers. All right, what cheers. are you having? Is that wine? I think it's Black Label in there. <laughs> oh, Black <laughs> Label. <Yeah>. Oh. <laughs> All right. Oh. <laughs> but if I do have a message to the um, young men and women out there who want to be athletes i think that you know you just take it in your stride time management always um practice 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 and you know don't let anyone tell you that oh, it's just one life or another you know you can you can do both and honestly it is the most impressive thing when you can be both a student and an athlete and that's what everyone is looking for at this moment you know when when you when you can do both it's it makes you another level of person, but yeah, yeah, that's pretty much. Yep, it. that is very true. I mean, like, uh, it's kind of weird. Mm. It's kind of weird if you have a boss who's not an athlete. It's kind of frustrating. Right, right. It's frustrating. <laughs> I'm not sure if no, I should... no, I'm, I'm glad that all my my bosses are um, uh, from different nationalities and and they play football. So, so it's nice. It's nice. But, but it's something to relate to, you know? Like, you can't just be like, oh, yeah, I studied here, and that's it. You don't have any extracurriculars. You don't play any sports. So you got to get out there. Yep. Yeah. It's really something. It's, it's a it's really big plus if you have a sport or, like, something extracurricular once you get to college. So it, so it goes beyond that. Eh? You're going to bring that uh, to your workplace to how you do whatever you do after college. So yeah, thank you, Christina. Thank you, Kali, for those messages. Now we head on over to Doc, Doc Marie. <laughs> Doc Marie. Oh my gosh, I still can't believe it sometimes. But yeah, um, I'm now a second year med student um, in Cebu, of all places. Yeah, um, why why Cebu? My, my question. 
actually, I've always wanted to move here and always want, I always saw myself going to med school outside of Manila. It was just something that I saw happening. Maybe it was me back in the day as a freshman visiting Cebu when I wasn't supposed to, but I did it anyways. <laughs> okay. Callie That's probably something... ta- Callie knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Maybe we can talk about that another time. Some other I, was episode, residency. Yeah. <laughs> I was in residency anyway, so it didn't really matter. But um definitely something that I was looking forward to accomplishing. And I think just manifesting always that I'm gonna be a sports medicine doctor or I'm gonna enter med school one day after college. It was something that always like came up where if somebody asked me I could confidently try to say that as much as possible no matter like the barriers that came in my way where I thought you know I don't think med is for me but it came up so I'm here alone I'm not gonna say where I live so people can't stalk me but <laughs> I'm in Cebu and definitely it's been interesting figuring out myself day by day with the quarantine and discovering new things but definitely just studying and focusing Focusing on how I can be part of the future um, positions for the Philippines. So, at the end of the day, serve the people. And for anybody who's a fan of the women's football team or UP teams in general, thank you, thank you, thank you for always supporting. It's it's a big help to know that people are out there cheering for us. Um, supporting us even though when we feel like we don't de- maybe we don't deserve it but i thank you for that um to the student athletes never you know never stop believing in yourself you can always you can always achieve what you really believe in so yeah that's pretty much it great great thank you marie so thank you for having having us thank you for accepting our invitation i mean it's, it's like- a pleasure Ah, uh, sige, Piel and Levy, final messages from you guys, really quickly. Ah, uh, si Levy ko muna. Oh, Levy. Ah, uh, yeah, well, thanks for, of course, gracing us for this very long but very entertaining and yes, eye-opening yes. interview yep. session. That, if, if this part one, then I can only imagine what part two would be like or what it would look like. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, I think it's it, this this cool thing that we're doing, Talaya, the alumni series, really about you know pa, uh, past athletes just talking about their lives when they were in UP and their experiences, so on and so forth, and where UP has taken them. And we we all I think we all learned a lot from each other tonight. Very, uh, you guys are awesome. That's all I can say. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Siguro, ano, thank you then for um, uh, being with us tonight. Uh, I know you have things to do, siempre. Pero um, it's also fun to talk with um, past athletes, tapos um, ano pa, student leader leaders, and um, it's uh, champions. Yeah, champions. And um, siguro uh, younger athletes or younger people who want to go to you people would also learn from this so thank you all right uh yeah to close this I actually started this channel uh, this like segment uh, around a year ago now mainly to focus on the basketball team because uh, that that season last year we had uh, was had all the hype it got so i thought to myself now why not make a show out of it and like to Cover the whole season and you know. I actually started with Enzo Rigondola. He's not with us right now, since he's not a football person. <laughs> but I usually <laughs> do the guessings with him. But then yeah, I mean like hearing your stories right now. I'm sure all the other sports in UP uh, have all have their own issues as well, and uh, just making them like voice out their own opinions and their own issues. I think that's a big uh, that's a big that's a big uh, thing already for them, no. So, I mean, we're not here to, like, bash the admin. We're not here to, like, uh, to step on anyone. I mean, we just do this to, like, for, for the, the normal students to, like, uh, get a glimpse of how it is to be a student athlete in UP. So, just to, like, appreciate the efforts that uh, all, the, all the other athletes, even in, in other schools, put, in, put the hard work into, you know. 
So yeah, I mean, hopefully we get to see uh, we get to guess more uh, athletes from other sports, no man. Uh, if it's if it's from football, why not? But I mean, I'm I'm a football person myself. I, I'd like to hear more stories about you guys about uh, whatever it is. Na, especially now, what what they have what what the issues are now comparing it to your your issues back then. So yeah, I mean, that's it. Uh, we'd love to have you guys back, as I've, as I've been saying. Uh, mm-hmm. We got so much from this episode. I think Callie still has something up her sleeve. Really? stretching my mouth. I was like, I'm going to respond to what he said. You want to show? Very quickly. <laughs> Really no. Yeah, but but um but um thank you guys for for having us and and the amount of research that you guys did. I mean, I know that we're not the most popular sport, right? But you guys watch the games, the finals, and everything, and I really appreciate that. So thank you guys for having us. I and think if, if someone it. told me if someone told me a few years ago that people would still ask us about the championship season, I would have smacked them over the head because I would never <laughs> believed it. Like. People yeah. still know that we won, and it just blows my mind that there were people that supported us. Because, like Marie said, sometimes I feel like we didn't really deserve it. Like we just went out there and did our job. Like I don't think we deserve any quote unquote fans or whatever. Yeah. But we are very, very thankful for those that 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 know what the work that we put in. So thank you guys for knowing the work we put in and mm-hmm. wanting to talk about it in front of people. Come on, guys. And hopefully, hopefully. You guys deserve it. There's no memorial was, was packed during that game. Come on. So how can you say uh-huh. you didn't have fans? No, but, but I mean, hopefully we can hear your yeah, stories. Yeah. I mean, you guys always talk about everyone else's stories and you guys sound like you guys have really interesting stories as well. So yeah. maybe we should you guys should do a fucking video about yourselves. You know? Yeah, probably sometime. <laughs> Once you get the tracks on it. Why not? Why not? Do I? <laughs> Again, thank you guys. Thank you, Christina, Marie, and Kelly for, ha- for joining thank us. Thank you. This episode, we got so much insight Thanks from you. Thanks so much. Hopefully, you get the guy, we get guest, so your other teammates as well, even Coach Anto. Uh, yeah. Be, I'm sure he's going to be lined up uh, as well in one of our episodes. Again. Thank you guys. This has been Maroon Talk. But I'm going to UP Fight. Peace. UP Fight. See you guys. UP Fight. Bye guys. Bye guys. Thank you. Bye.